ओके लेट स्टार्ट विथ एक्चुअली आवर सी एस एस प्रोग्रामिंग टूडे लाइक लास्ट सेशन वी हैव डिस्कस लाइक हाउ व्हाट इज द मार्जिन पैडिंग एंड द पोजिशन ऑल ऑफ थिंग एंड ऑल्सो वी हैव डिस्कस लाइक हाउ द सी एस एस वर्क वॉट आर द इंटरनल सी एस एस वॉट इज द एक्सटर्नल सी एस एस एक्सटर्नल सी एस एक्चुअली वी डू नॉट डिस्कस बट वील गोइंग टू डिस्कस इन लेटर वॉट इज इनलाइन सी एस एस एंड वॉट इज our uh, internal css and how you are going to write the different different type of selector including class and um, id selector uh, element selector element plus class selector and the group selector i think all of you know all these things right in today's class we are going to rapidly go and learn about the different different syntax what about the like css script is available in uh, like in css like what are the different different uh, Kind of code we have to learn in CSS. I have created a couple of uh, stable file for you because writing and uh, same time writing and explaining you all of things that can take a little bit time. But what I am going to from uh, today onward, like I will create some of the HTML file and I will show you what is the each and every attribute uh, uses and that will be uh, help you to know what exactly we are doing and it will be little bit take less time to explain all these things. Okay. Let's go and before going uh, into our um, HTML syntax, all these things, you have to know the concept of a unit. What is a unit? Uh, you people already know that that anything can be measurable. It's a unit. Like uh, if you go for your petrol and you go for any kind of uh, vegetable and all these things, you are purchasing anything on a uh, unit. In kg, it may be liter, it may be anything. Right? The same way in the web programming or any of the screen. You can see the screen, right? This is the screen, right? This screen has different different type of. You know, this is the boundary of the screen, right? This is start from here, start from here, and it will be end here, right? Means you know the all the people you know that everything nowadays like it's a 4K or it's maybe uh, to uh, the, like uh, 180, 1080p and 720p. All these things. What is all these things? These are the resolution. Right? Yeah. Based on the resolution, uh, and suppose just imagine you are developing a site. This site now just imagine my screen size is 14, suppose 13 inches. Now you are developing an application, and that application screen should be suppose 29 inches. And maybe some of these screens are 5 inches, like your mobile. Now what happens for different different um, devices? Your screen size will be different different. Due to that, whatever text you are displaying here, the text will be going to be down, increase or decrease based on the screen size. Example, what just example you can see this uh, this uh, mail ID, right? This mail ID is looks like good in your in the um, your um, desktop, but when you open this one in your uh, uh, mobile browser, the size of the font will be a little bit uh, smaller because based on the screen size, all the font, all the images will be display adjust to that one. Okay, but the question is now how we can increase and decrease of a specific text or specific anything. Suppose you want to increase this length or you want to increase this text size, and you need to do any less size or up size. Now we require the concept of unit. Okay, the concept of a unit means just a second, guys. <clears throat> Concept of a unit means like how we are going to set the size of anything. Size of anything I am talking about all the things. It may be image, it may be text, it may be uh, like content, it may be video, all these things. Whatever you are displaying in the site, how you are going to set the size. To set a size, actually you need you we need some kind of measurement, right? The same same kind of measurement in HTML in CSS for doing the measurement we require different different kind of measurement unit, right? Suppose for you size, uh, suppose some of the size uh, size you decide for your site, it will be large Excel, same way, right? The same way to define any kind of size of your uh, website font or images, then we have to consider as of now for current we are going to consider two things. One is px, another is percent. Px is a full form, you know, Excel. Okay, because nowadays all you know that all content pixel and the percentage means you already know that our always all the things will be 100% in between 100% you have to go into choose from 0 to 100 right always the 100 is the maximum percent you have to choose 
0 to 100 percent the pixel will be whatever pixel going to give that is going to work for the specific screen size okay let me go and show you how we can go and um, use this pixel and percentage in the stm in the html using css before going into all these things like as i told uh, last two week like uh, now day, from today's onward we are not going to use notepad because uh, notepad uh, is just for a for demonstration i'm just showing all these things but for you it's good to write in notepad because um, you are going to write you, it may be uh, help for you write the hand practice of your syntax you have to remember all these things because if you go for any of the text editor like sublime or we have got notepad plus plus or we are going for um, vs code or any of the third party editor code editor the benefit is like like that you are not going to write all the syntax automatically the uh, syntax is given by the uh, editor but for you the people who are going to start the development in web development is always recommended you have to remember the simple syntax how it's work all these things okay this is recommended for you now uh, go and set up the um, code editor uh, for today we are going to use the vs code like vs code means it's uh, vs stand for visual studio visual studio code it's a free code for from microsoft like this is the uh, <coughs> code editor is given by microsoft uh, i am recommended this one because this is now the popular vs code it's not only for design the site but the things will be in future uh, if you are going to write any kind of angular or react or any kind of programming nowadays you can use this vs code now it is a good editor as of now it's a lightweight and it will work very fast let's see how we can install the vs code how we are going to work it to uh, install like vs code let me download the vs code uh, like vs code I'll, i just write vs code in the google you can see that uh, it's displaying visual studio code code editor and alignment just click it i i think some of you know that all these things but for you a better understanding i'm just let you know you can download this um, uh, build like whatever based on your if you're using mac or anything it's going to give you all these things okay if you're using linux all these things is going to give you all these things whatever based on your platform you're going to download download after download you already know that how to install a software right once you install software you can get that in your uh, ui in your ui you can get a uh, just a second okay. what will happen <clears throat> you will get this kind of um, code this one this kind of um, uh, icon is called vs code okay otherwise you can go and search vs code it will going to open okay then what will happen what will do just a second guys this is a vs code uh, interface like uh, it is just an editor it's nothing else just a, as as your uh, notepad this is the same as notepad only the only difference is there is some robust they are giving to write a program or anything you just create a file or you can create a folder any places suppose just example i have created training as a folder okay and what i want to do i want to open this training folder in vs code just right click it here and open in code sorry what will happen you can see that all my folder and everything inside this training okay whatever whatever you are going to whatever inside this folder and all the files is going to here then you will ask what is the benefit of that the benefit is like suppose um, we are going i'm just created one html call you know just html okay i'm going to explain all these things what will happen suppose you want to create a html file okay just take the, okay let me show you from scratch just example you want to create a folder just click it here and there is an option called create new folder you have to click the new folder you can give the name suppose give name as a demo inside this you want to create a file just click it here and click this one this new file click it and give suppose uh, abc.html okay automatically you got create, create a file okay you have to create up to your requirement you have to create a folder you can create a file you can get all these things okay let me go i have created one folder predefined i have created one folder today it's called css inside the css i have created a sub folder is called unit okay how can i going to create just click it and click it here it's going to automatically create a sub folder let me create one file okay what will create i'll right click here a new file either right click here new file otherwise if you click it here and click it here also you can create a new file 
well, let me give the new file name unit.html. Okay. So you can see I have created a file called unit.html. Now I have to write the CS syntax. The syntax will be what we are going to previous write HTML and end, then body start, then head start, and head end, then body start, body end. We are write, writing all these things, right? Now, no need to write all these things, just simple. Uh, write HTML. You can see HTML5 pages is playing. Just uh, once you write HTML, it's giving suggestion using your arrow, using your um, keyboard arrow up and down. Just press HTML5, just enter. See it. What happened? It is playing or uh, it just created a specific, uh, like some of the template for you. Okay. Uh, in later, we're going to discuss all these things what is meta and all these things later in advanced course of HTML. Um, then just imagine once I enter, you can able to see the basic HTML file here, right? Means wh what is the basic HTML file? And there is a functionality called uh, formatting. You can see all the data is supposed to be entering something here and uh, okay. And uh, you are writing something here, uh, all these things, right? Suppose you want to do alignment. Doing the alignment, you have to simply right click the file and do the format document or control alt F. The format document you will do, you can see automatically all the things get aligned by the HTML standard. Okay, this is just a basic stuff I want to say you about the VS Code. I am not going in depth into all these things. When we are, uh, if anyone going to like um, join the class here, uh, like React or Angular, that time we are going to know full fledged use of how it's working in all the things. What is terminal? How you can go run and do a lot? There is a lot of things inside this um, VS Code that I'm going to discuss on that chapter only. But for, for this HTML, you know how to write HTML, simple write HTML, arrow down HTML5, just click, then you have to get a HTML structure and you can add a template, suppose you need, then you use your body, okay, save it. What will happen? <clears throat> Automatically, it's displaying here, right? Now, uh, what will happen? I, I want to open this file in browser, what will be? I'll open in file, reveal in file explorer and uh, i'll just double click it here it's opening here right file is now we have this unit html let's go and write, uh, talk to this unit i think you got it right how to install a vs code and how we are going to open the file right this is the basic one how to use editor same way we are going to do all these things let's go to our real chapter okay This is your unit one. This is your unit. Uh, this is your unit. Now I explain like we have two kind of unit. Uh, actually, there is n number of unit, but for today's class, I'm going to discuss about these two unit. And the latter we're going to discuss what is the absolute unit and the relative unit. Okay, that is we're going to discuss later. Let's go and discuss about this pixel. Let me add some uh, h1 tag. Okay, you know h1 tag start for heading. Let me I welcome to unit refresh and it will go here you are displaying you will come to unit now what i try to do i want to increase the size of the <coughs> this particular one then what i try to do either i can go it here and write the style sheet i always recommend don't need to write the inline style sheet if not required then i will simple go and put the style okay. uh, just imagine uh, I'm trying to say it here, like in your um, uh, notepad, you are going to write the style, then uh, you have to put the get less than symbol automatically in VS code, automatically going to add the end one, no need to add this one, means if you go and write style, just press uh, greater than, automatically what will happen, it will automatically give you the end one, no need to add the same thing, okay. Auto close. Uh, yeah, automatically getting the close the tag. Okay, now what will happen? I need to add the syntax for H1 because I have defined the syntax. To add a, uh, like uh, to increase the decrease of a font, decrease or increase of a, uh, like whatever text inside any of the element, we have to use font size. Okay. I'll explain all the things later, what uh, the different, different attribute of font, but today, in this chapter, I'm going to display, uh, explain about the unit. Just remember, font size means what is the font you are using, right? If you are using the, any notepad or anything, uh, notepad, I mean, if you are writing any uh, document in 
Microsoft Word, you know, you have to increase the font size and decrease the font size, right? That is the same one. In HTML, if you want to apply any of the font size, font size means what is the size of the font, then you have to use the syntax called font hyphen size. Then you already know the we have this is the attribute, and after the colon, we have the attribute value, right? Attribute value. It, it's giving a lot of things. Just imagine we are going to use the pixel. You can use the 12 pixel, just example. Okay. What is this 12 pixel? Let me explain one this 12 pixel. Okay. This 12 pixel means 12 pixel means part is the value, second is the unit. Pixel stand for px okay if i save it if i refresh then you can see that it tends to 12 pixel the same way i can increase any any uh, size it's that is pixel there is no limitation uh, whereas in percentage there is a limitation you can only give 0 to 100 because i always know that the percentage always be 100 percent right the same way if you are going to give any kind of percentage suppose i am giving it 90 pixel now what will happen you can see the text size okay this is called pixel okay now if i go and actually the percentage is not okay let me do one thing this is called uh, pixel you got it right how pixel work it means this is the one of the unit which is used to set a size of a font okay size of a text or size of anything okay in the same way let me go and let me go and add one div sorry okay you already got it what is pixel pixel is used to set a unit of a anything anything means it may be text it may be anything in a form of pixel okay that is the use of pixel it's an absolute one so in future we are going to learn what is absolute what is relative in letter page but uh, let's go and learn about let me add one div and add some text. I'm going to add some text. Let me add some dummy text. Okay, as you are uh, a developer of like you are going to develop anything in the future, just imagine. Suppose you want to add some dummy text. Um, suppose you want to add some dummy text in your site. Uh, there is a site called lipsum.com okay always remember this one the site name is lipsum.com okay this site is used it's a free of text a free of one let me paste this from the chat box anyone can copy it here always it's for all the standard one you have to use this lipsum.com site and you have to use this one this one lorem ipsum is simple dummy text of the printing and typesetting industry means in future actually this is not required i'm just saying in future you want to if you don't find anything to write it here just copy this text and paste it okay. this is a free text you can use in your website okay let me reduce this to 20 pixel this is the free text okay you just want to copy and use it here now what I'm trying to do, I have to use the concept of pixel and percentage in div. Let me go and add that I have a div tag. Let me set width, width of the div to suppose 200 pixel. You can see, guys, I think already see that, right? If I right click and inspect, you can see that my div. This is my div, right? This is my just a second. This is my div, right? You can see that the in top you can see a div 200 into 370x. You can see that that is mouse over in there, right? You can see that this percentage is set to 200 pixel, means the width is that much only. Okay. Whereas, just example, whereas let me do one thing this one no not copy let me use the same one instead of using the pixel instead of using the pixel let me use the concept of percentage let me give the percentage of 50 percent to use the percent you have to use the percentage symbol okay to use the pixel you have to use the px symbol px um, like <coughs> character I save it 
and if I refresh, you can see that this entire one, this 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 one, this D is capturing the 50% of the screen. Means, let me do background. Okay, color red. You can see here what happening. This screen, this area is capturing 50% of the screen. If you divide this entire screen into 100, if you divide into this part 2, you can see that this is the 50%, this is the 50%. If I increase this one, you can see that my, if I increase this one, you can see that the size of the, un, the size of the div is getting increased. If I decrease, it's getting decreased. Why it's getting increased and decreased? Because when you are deciding anything as a percentage, always remember this term. Whenever you are going to decide any of the uh, any of the element in percentage, the size of in percentage, it's going to check the size of the screen. Okay, means if your screen is this much, it will 50% right. Means it will going to give you 50% of this site. Okay, if you increase the this one, it's going to give you 50% of this entire one, okay, means, let me, <coughs> just a second, I know your people understand, let me understand again, okay, you, as you know that, this entire one, this, uh, sorry, this entire one is 100%, always remember, this entire one is a hundred percent because this is your browser always whatever display is a hundred percent in that this if you are said this div as 50 percent what will happen this is a 50 percent and this is also 50 percent if you decrease then what will happen the hundred percent suppose you decrease to this much only then this is a 50 percent and this is a 50 percent and what i'm trying to say to here if you are set, set any of the uh, element size in percentage that will work based on the screen size whereas if you are using any of this any of the uh, element size in pixel that is not going to change based on the screen size for that reason whenever design any site or anything you just always remember you have to set the size of the site in percentage but it's not always true. Why I'm not saying true? Before going that, you can see if I uh, like um, expand or collapse this website, you can see that this unit size is always constant. It's not getting changed based on the screen size. Whereas if I change anything, you can see the size of the div getting changed based on the screen size. Okay if you are designing any kind of a layout just imagine if you are designing any kind of a layout layout means suppose you are designing any website like uh, amazon or you, you, you are designing any site uh, like uh, flipkart in that case you can see let me open amazon okay <clears throat> For a, a reference you can see they are if you increase or decrease okay some of the is increasing some are decreasing okay what happening maybe they are setting pixel or that that may be because it's a hundred percent right we are going to design all these things but just imagine all these things they are designing based on the designing concept for that reason i'm saying when you're going to design any kind of layout this kind of layout and all these things always go for percentage okay but whenever you are setting any text value or any kind of you know this area is going to be bound that way then you have to give a pixel means whenever you know that the in which platform your application running that time you have to give the if you know the area okay i know that this area is not beyond that always be it will be 200 pixel then you have to give 200 pixel if you know that okay based on the screen the size will be increased and decrease then give the percentage this is the two basic use of percentage and pixel okay always remember when you are going to use the pixel when you are going to use the percentage okay this is the basic one of unit but later we'll learn about different different one like that is a em rem a lot of things there we're going to learn last one okay when you're going to use the bootstrap that time only we are going to use it okay 
I think you clear on this um, unit measurement. What is unit of px? What is the unit of percentage? Okay. Now, before uh, after we complete all these things, let's go and start with our actual CSS one. Okay. Today I have created all these things. I don't know how much I will going to cover, but let's go start with colors because from day one I'm using color. Okay. Let me go and uh, open the color one. I have created one CSS file training. I will go into share all of you all these things, colors. Okay. Now, you know that without color, nothing will going to look like good, right? You have to apply some color. It may be your brand color, it may be your logo color, anything. You have to use some color. To use a color, like suppose you can see that I have H1 tag. Okay, this is a basic syntax. This is H1 tag. I am writing welcome to CSS color. To apply a color, uh, you know, you have to use the colors one. Like suppose how you are setting the font size all these things same way if you want to set any color you have to use the color one okay color tag then you have a color value <clears throat> okay now there is a question what are the different different way i can set a color okay as of now we are going to discuss what are the different different type of color you can set for that what we can do let me To define a color, sorry, to define a color, we can use two type of color format, like two types of coloring, three types of. Let's go for three types of as of now. Three types of coloring. One is, one is name. Name means what is name? Like uh, you can see it. I have used color green. I can use color red. I can use color orange. Whatever color name you know. You can give the simple name. First one is the name. By default, you can give any color as a name. You can if I give it uh, orange. If I repress it, you can see this is looks like a orange. Let me pull up this one. Okay. Okay. What you learn first? First one is the name. You can give any name here whatever name you know like pink blue red yellow whatever you give second one is rgb okay before going into rgb you people have should have known that how how color is work that is the main basic concept actually i am not going to in depth but just have to know that how color work in this world whatever color you can see you can see this head red you can see this in white this uh, red green and blue. yes all these things right all these things in this world work in this rgb you all all know that all of you know right rgb red green yes. blue means any color you want to generate in this world when any color that should be only generated using the rgb okay what is the rgb rg means r stand for red okay red blue. next green then blue, blue. Means Anything you are going to use red, green, blue, if combination of red, green, blue, you can generate everything. That is called RGB format. That the way in CSS is going to support the RGB format. Okay, means if you are going to set any kind of a color in your HTML page, you have to use this RGB. Then you have to know the, what is the RGB value from starting to end. Always know that the RGB, start, RGB value is actually tightly coupled with ASCII code. What is the ASCII code? Anyone know? What is the ASCII limit? Right? 0 to 255. The ASCII character limit. Right? Means all the all the um, like color, whatever you are going to RGB, like RGB, all color with the combination of a 0 to 255. Means, means if you are going to set the R equal to 2 and green equal to 4 and blue equal to 5, then it's going to give a new color. If I'm going to give 122, for, suppose 123 and 124, it's going to give a different color. Means the combination of RGB you can going to use, you can generate an image. You are going to generate a color. Okay. How are you going to generate a color? That we're going to explain later. Let me first explain all these things. First of all, that it's called name, first one name, second one is RGB, second one, third one is hexa. Hexa means the hexadecimal. Okay. Using the hexa, you can use the this one. Means the same one. 
like uh, RR is the BB. Means this is the hexadecimal. For RGB, RGB you have to give the red, green, blue. So, so not yes. means the HTML CSS means CSS is going to support these three kind of another one is there uh, is there HLS but not we are not going to discuss on that but basically the um, CSS is going to support these three kind of color okay one is RG one is name second one is RGB third one is hexa okay mostly nowadays people are using hexa and rgb no one going for name because you know the name you, you cannot remember this all the how we are going to remember this this name it may be a little bit blue a little bit uh, other things right you cannot generate because you you cannot give the different different name of different, different customized color right for that reason either you go for rgb or you can go for hexa let's go and add some color here okay you can see it here i am using color orange without using orange what will do you can simply click it here okay you can see it's giving rgb rgb 255 160 and 0 means it's saying the red is 255 mean green is 165 and blue is 0 means using these three it's generating the orange what will do if i going to use the red you can see that what's happening rgb 255 and 170 is considered means if you up and down based on your color all these things getting changed okay you can see that what happening instead of writing color red you can write rgb bracket 255 388 38 comma 0 okay if i save it if I refresh you can see it displaying red if you know the color then you apply the color if you don't know the color you want to add some different, different suppose light red how are you going to write, uh, name a light red you can write uh, write then light red right or dark red how are you going to write uh, dark red you can write right for that reason it's always recommended go for rgb it's a dark red you can see that dark red a dark red because red is 255 others are uh, 00, 0. but uh, dark blue 0 255 can see actual blue this is the concept of how we are going to generate the this one this is one of the first one what we learn the color we learn name suppose orange then we learn color as the best of rgb next we are going to learn the r End of the class, I will going to give you the different different uh, link where you can people know that how the hexa is, hexa generator working. This is called hexa one. This is just the different different type of hexa. Okay, the different different type of hexa. You can generate the hexa code here. You have to learn all these things. It's up to you. Okay. If a mouse over here, you can see different different hexa is generating based on that because you cannot remember all these things just always remember you never remember the color always you have to use this kind of structure because you don't know which color you are going to use right okay this is up to you i cannot go to explain each and every class how blue generating how what is the hexa code of uh, red and all these things you just go and mouse over and drag and drop you can see able to whatever color just paste it that one okay now this is the three way you can set the color <clears throat> anyone any doubt on this okay now in in the h1 i need to only keep this three only one color right i cannot go to add the uh, this color i just want to comment these two color comment means either i can remove this one so i just want to comment in the html for the using the comment we are using this syntax right hyphen can i refresh your page this one for adding the here you can add the simple coding style you people know multi-line commenting here you have to add a class uh, then star mark 
whatever comment part you want to do then star and has and the slash then it will going to give the commenting okay this is the use for comment a uh, css okay then what we we'll learn we will learn how to add a color then we will learn about different different structure of color there is a three type of color we we'll discuss one is name one is rgb one is hexa okay it's up to you how you're going to generate this is all about color means any color you want to apply this is the concept of color and remember sir, this if color one, multiple hello sorry multiple color sir if we, no sir if you apply same style multiple times then which one it will take uh, the, if you write this one this is actually uh, this syntax yes, yes. last one yes, always last one i think last one okay. yeah last one because always uh, compiler are compiled from top to bottom, right? What is the bottom yes, yes. value will be there that is going to be captured. And you should always recommend don't write the same syntax two, uh, two times because you are comp when you're going to actually do the compilation, you're going to give the error. Okay, this is the basic of color. You know the how the color is work. Okay, let's go. Now color is completed. Now we'll work on border. Okay, before going into border, let me discuss on background. Okay, this will be a little bit bigger than background means. Just imagine. Let me open in one of this site. You can see in the technology, in this area, some background is there, right? This uh, some glow background is there. To the top, there is a text, all our text, right? And you want to set some background of a div, or suppose you want to set a background of anything like a, a body or something, right? Now, how you can go add a background? Let me show that. Before going that, let me discuss how you can add a background color. You can see that in this side, the background color is white. In this, in this one, the background color is white. Suppose instead of doing white, I want to make the background color as a red. Now, how you can set any of the website background color? It's set the color. For that, let me open uh, what I bought it, BG, BG color, okay? How you can do that? Let me... Just a second. Okay. Same syntax. To set, to set a background color, we know we have a body. Body also a? element right anything is an element body if you want to set a background color you have to use the syntax background hyphen color color is only for text color always remember color is only for text color but if you are using background hyphen color then it will be a background color where i am setting the background color i am setting background color for the body means this is the body color will be Light. So let me change to anything. Let me change to red. Okay. You can see I have changed to this one. The same way, if you want to change the color to different one, you can based on your requirement, you can you can going to change it. Okay. It's up to you how you are going to decide all these things. This is the basic way to set a background color. Now the question how you can set a background color of a div just example let me add a div here okay same one and add like um, um, mine custom color what will do i'll add a div then background color hyphen color yeah background color equal red then what will do suppose width equal to uh, 20 pixel and height will be Okay, I will explain all this width and height, but as of now, just refresh. You can see, yeah, see, this is my div, and to the div, I have said the background color. Okay, this is the basic use of a background color. You have to remember this syntax, okay, background color. Let's go and discuss about background image. As I discuss it here, suppose I want to set this kind of background image. 
this kind of background image in a website and how can going to set it let me open i have created background image okay what i'll do instead of doing let me set the background image background image okay i have set one background image to set a background image what i'll do in the body or any of the div any of the places like i'm why i'm adding body because it's a easier easier one to add a background image you have to write background image okay then colon url you have to give the path of the ima image right url then your image path okay now this is why image path i'm giving this way let me explain the folder structure first this is this is my root folder right in this root folder i have css is a folder inside that i have bg is a folder inside that i am creating all these files means but my images is present inside the images folder okay my images is present inside the images folder means if i going to give the path of the images what i'll do i need to go to back why to back means i am inside this bg I'll go one back then I'll go another back to CSS then inside images I'll go to the images for that reason if any time you want to give the location of a image or you want to give location of a file in HTML always you have to remember this double dot slash means double dot slash means it will give you the root it will already navigate to the top root means I'll explain it here what a double uh, means my file contain inside this bg folder i want to go up to go up in css you have to give double dot slash i'll go up again in this folder i'll go another up for that give double dot slash give up inside this i have a images i go inside that that inside that i have a bg dot jpg this is i'm going to use clear all these things if I have a three, suppose in suppose I have inside the CSS, I have a BG, inside that I have a folder, inside that I have file, then I'll use three means three times. One is one up, second is another up, then I have to go to top, then a double dot class. Always remember this way. This is the basic one. If you're using any programming, like if you're developing in future React or Angular, anything, if you're setting any images in CSS, you have to understand this logic. This is the basic for all these things. Means here you are giving the path of a file using this double dot slash okay you got it what is the url setting here this url it's maybe your local or you can give your remote it's up to you how you're going to give it but as of now i'm dis discuss here how you're going to set the background image using the background hyphen image tag right first we'll learn how to set background color then we'll learn background image another one is background position what is background position let me discuss okay before we background position let me discuss about background repeat okay what is repeat okay. let me open for you this images you can see this images is very tiny images right just gradient type of image means it's just a little bit pink and coming down it's white right now what i'll do i want to make this kind of structure like entire site i want to this top was pink little bit faded faded and white but the question is just imagine someone opening this site in tv someone opening in large screen someone opening in small screen are you going to develop these images for all the screens no right it's not possible like you don't know which devices you are opening the site opening this kind of site for that you cannot going to design these images suppose uh, 120 pixel and you are going to not going to define in suppose larger screen lower screen they're not going to define right but if you want to use the same image as a background then how can do that okay to do that let me explain First one, you already know that how to set an image. I have image set the image. And what I'll do, I want to, after I image, use this image, I want to repeat the image. Means I want to repeat this image in repeat X. Means I'll repeat in horizontally. 
for that reason if you are using background repeat equal to repeat x what it does it will repeat the image in horizontally if i go and write background y and what will happen it will going to repeat in vertically you see it is going to repeat the vertically if i go to x it is going to repeat in horizontally if i go to no repeat just write no repeat going to repeat anything it was a simple image okay it's up to you how you are going to use your image based on the site you want to repeat it you don't want to repeat it it's up to you okay but repeat it's content 3 one is x for vertical uh, for horizontal y for vertical no repeat for nothing always remember x always be vertical uh, horizontal y always be vertical it's always be constant there is no changes okay if you have to repeat this way, means this way, then x, this way, then y, nothing, then no repeat. If you don't use anything, it will be no repeat. Okay. No, no. If you don't use anything, it will be default repeat x. Always remember, sorry. If you don't use, let me see. If you don't use what happening. Okay. It's this is working this way. X and y. It's working both x and y. You have to use repeat x. Okay. If you don't want, you have to use no repeat. It's all about background repetition. Let's go and work with background position. Okay. What is background position? I'll show you something here. Background position. You can see this one. Okay. This one, this, this uh, text and, um, uh, and this is the image. Inside the div, what I make? I make this image will come I'll always be right okay now my question how you can achieve this kind of design okay. for that simple one first syntax already know that background repeat background image you have to set the background image then what i did background repeat so this is repeat sorry, 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 sorry. background position okay the first one i have set background image whatever image i am to set i have to set the image then i have said background repeat no repeat and said background position i have to use background position right top means it is going to display always right hand side top but i understand left top what will happen it will go in for the left hand side Yesterday, uh, last um, friday i have discussed about position position will be uh, right left top bottom right all the position same way if then left top means it's going for the corner left bottom means it's going for it's going for bottom one this is the bottom your left top means going for top one right means it go for right one it's up to you how we are going to set it okay the background is going to place inside this body using this position it's up to you how you're going to define nowadays no one going to use this background position all these things but just you have to remember how you can going to set the background images background color background repeat background position okay I am going to share all these things to you. You have to set this way. Okay. This is called background. <clears throat> Let's go about the border. Okay. You have to learn about the border concept. What is border? Anything we have a this thing have a border. Everything I've seen there is some border, right? In HTML, how we can in CSS how we can work with a border? You can see I have I have designed a border here. Okay, I will explain the code later, but let's see. There's a border, it's a dotted border, it's a dash border, it's a solid border, double border, grove border. Grove means it's just getting a little bit down, down. A ridge border, an insert border, an out, outside border, no border, hidden border, a mixed border. Okay, means to set a border to any of the element any of your element means you have to set any of the deep uh, paragraph span or anything you want to set a border then how you can set the border using css okay let me do first what is border i have defined a different different type of paragraph here okay i have defined paragraph dotted all these things and here define one of the class to apply the border style we have this much type of style is there okay for like you have to if you set the style of a the border then you have to write 
border style equal to dotted what will happen it will give a it will give a border with dotted line okay dotted then same way style equal to dash it will give a hyphen 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 all these things then border equal to solid then i give to solid one this way you have to set there is n number of things you have to use okay now now the the question is how you can say the border color okay suppose just imagine this solid one i want to change the border color okay to change the border color you have to use border hyphen color okay border color suppose i am give it red if i save it if i refresh i can see that you can able to see the border is so border is solid style is solid color is red i want to increase and decrease the size of a border by default it will give a default border size okay suppose i want to increase the border size then border size border Right. You can see how much the syntax in a border. No one is going to remember all these things, but we have to use. We, we cannot this use this way. Just a second. You can set the border. Suppose you have to increase the size of a border, all these things. For that reason, we have another syntax. How we are going to use the syntax? We can use border. First one is the size. Then I have size suppose 3 pixel. Second one is the style. I have to use solid. Last one is the color. I will use red. Suppose. Okay. This is structure. Then what will do? First we have to set the size of the border. Then we have to set what is the uh, style of the border. Then we have to set the color of the border. Just a, just a second, this should be. Sorry, guys. Okay, set the border size, border width. It will be suppose three, suppose four pixel. You can see to set a border style, you have to use the border style command. To set a border color, you have to use the border color command. So to set the border width, you have to set the border width command. But just imagine now in CSS giving different way. Just example now suppose you want to set all these things at a time. How we are going to do that? You cannot go to write the all the syntax three times, right? For that reason, the CSS is giving a shorthand command. Shorthand syntax means you can simply write border. Then you have to give the pixel, suppose uh, five pixel. Then you have to give the style, suppose solid solid style. Then you have to give the color, suppose color is green. Instead of writing this three. You can write this single one in same line. This is called sort and tag. Let me remove this one and uh, save it and refresh. You can see this is working. This is called the sort and one. This is called the long hand. But wh what time you are going to use all these things based on the requirement? You can use this one individually. Otherwise, you can use this one as a single line. Okay. Now, last one I need to discuss here. Suppose you want to make this one a little bit rounded. Okay. Now this is a square, right? You want to make it rounded. For that, you have a syntax called border radius. Radius, you have to suppose give uh, suppose 5 pixel. Okay. Let me remove this one. You can see the little bit uh, rounded corner is getting here, right? Based on your requirement, you can increase and decrease the border rounding it here. 
it's up to you how you're going to set the border radius border radius means it is going to narrow the all the corner using the specific person specific pixel whatever pixel you want to give it's going to reduce based on the that one okay this is called a border okay i think today we have covered a lot of things anyone any question